In the early 1900s, when reindeer were introduced onto South Georgia by Norwegian whalers, their numbers were controlled by the whalers themselves who would hunt and eat the non-native species. But since the end of whaling in the 1960s, reindeer numbers had dramatically risen, causing damage and depletion to much of the island's tussock grass and vegetation. The reindeer not only consumed the tussock, but brushed their itchy velvet-coated antlers against the grass shown in this video. This damage spelt danger for many of the seabird communities who nested and burrowed on the islands and it was decided that eradication was the best form of conservation. At Government House, Martin Collins explained his hopes for the future recovery of South Georgia. And what we kind of expect to see happen is a return of a lot more of the small breeding birds. The rats have a big impact on any of the ground nesting birds. Um, we'll see some of the vegetation return, particularly sort of tussock grass in some areas where the, the reindeer have grazed that very hard. And birds like white chin petrels nest in the tussock grass. So hopefully we'll see those return as well. So it'll, it'll be a big change for the island. And as the eradication process has, has gone on, have you seen much in the way of, of bird life and, and plant life recovering already, or is it too early to see at the moment? Um, it's early days yet, but we, the, the area that was cleared of reindeer last year, which is called the Busan Peninsula, um, we've had specialists in there this season, um, and they're already seeing some of the vegetation recovering. Um, there's one species called uh, burnet or prickly burr, and that's growing back very quickly. Um, the tussock will take a little bit longer to recover. It'll probably take quite a while to recover, but that will happen. But I think it'll be, you know, five, 10, 15 years before we see the real benefits on the island. In January last year, the Norwegian Nature Inspectorate carried out the first of their extermination efforts. Now more than a year on, the islands are free of the non-native species, with the killing of more than 6,600 reindeer. One of the marksmen explained their project. Well, the density uh, in the area where we have reindeers, or we had reindeers, uh, is quite high. So uh, uh, when we start uh, cleaning an area, it's uh, kind, of, kind of easy, um, because there are a lot of animals. But uh, as the time, the time goes by, you, you get, of course, uh, less and less animals, and you have to search more. In the, in the most humane way possible, what kind of what measures did you take to make sure it was as pain-free as possible for the animals? Yeah, uh, this is also had to do with the pick of the, of the uh, ammunition, of course, and, and guns, and um, of course the skills. Uh, so uh, we all hunt uh, big game uh, at home, and uh, so we kind of know what we are capable of, of uh, when it comes to uh, distances for shots and things like that. And uh, uh, with a good ammunition, uh, reindeers are not very uh, hard to shoot, like they, they die quick because they're very light, uh, thin-skinned animals. So uh, it was not uh, uh, a very big issue if they were um, like in pain or not, because they, they were not. The former governor of the Falklands, Nigel Haywood, thanked the South Georgian government for ensuring the speed and safety of the project. He said, this represents a very important landmark in our efforts to safeguard the native fauna of South Georgia. The best option for South Georgia, from a conservation perspective, was to actually remove the reindeer entirely from the island. The eradication of reindeer has been on the cards for, for quite a number of years. It's just taken us a while, obviously, to kind of decide on, on to consult widely, make sure we get the methods right, and then actually implement that project. So yeah, no, it, it's, it's a, an important sort of milestone for South Georgia, this, in, in conserving the island and returning it to as, as natural state as possible.